Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose f is a function from the closed interval a comma b to r, and f is continuous on a comma b. Then f is bounded on a comma b. Now, to say that f is continuous on a comma b means that f is continuous at every point in a comma b. Now, in proving this theorem, we are going to be using the sequential criterion for continuity. Now, in regards to our function f, the sequential criterion tells us the following. Given c is any element of a comma b, the sequential criterion tells us that f is continuous at c if and only if, for every sequence yn in a comma b that converges to c, it follows that the sequence f of yn converges to f of c. Now, to say that f is bounded on a comma b means the following. It means that there exists a positive real number, capital M, such that for all x in a comma b, the absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to capital M. So the absolute value of every output value of this function is less than or equal to capital M. That's what it means. Now, we're also going to be using a lot of properties about convergent sequences. One of which is that every convergent sequence is bounded. Another property is as follows. If yn is a convergent sequence of real numbers such that every term in the sequence lies between a and b, then the limit of the sequence also lies between a and b. Now, we're also going to be using the fact that every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. This result is often referred to as the bolzano weierstrass theorem. Now, let's remind ourselves what a subsequence is. If x1, x2, x3, and so on is a sequence of real numbers, and n1, n2, n3, and so on is a strictly increasing sequence of positive integers, then the sequence xn1, xn2, xn3, and so on, xnk, is a subsequence of this sequence. Now, a property regarding strictly increasing sequences of positive integers that we're going to be using in proving this theorem is n1 is greater than or equal to 1, n2 is greater than or equal to 2, n3 is greater than or equal to 3, and so on. In general, we can prove by induction nk is greater than or equal to k for all positive integers k. And I'll link a video in the description below to where we prove this, and also these results as well. So now, let's get into proving this theorem. Now, we're trying to prove that f is bounded on a comma b. And to prove that, we'll assume for a contradiction, we instead have f is not bounded on a comma b. Well then, we're saying that the negation of this statement is true. And the negation of this statement is to say, for all positive real numbers, capital M, there exists an element x in a comma b, such that the absolute value of f of x is greater than capital M. Now, this statement works for every positive real number. So what we're going to do here is, we are going to apply the statement to each positive integer. For example, we could apply this statement to 1. And we have that there exists some real number x1 in a comma b such that the absolute value of f of x1 is greater than 1. And if we apply the statement to 2, we have that there exists a real number x2 in a comma b such that the absolute value of f of x2 is greater than 2. And in general, we're applying this statement to an arbitrary positive integer n. We have that there exists some real number xn in a comma b such that the absolute value of f of xn is greater than n.
And so this gives us a sequence of real numbers, x1, x2, x3, and so on. And all terms of that sequence belong to the closed interval a comma b. So certainly this sequence is a bounded sequence. So since the sequence is bounded, according to the bolzano weierstrass theorem, there must exist a convergent subsequence, xn1, xn2, xn3, and so on. And since this is a convergent sequence, we're going to say that the limit of the sequence is equal to c. Now, since every term of x1, x2, x3, and so on, is between a and b, well then certainly every term of the subsequence is also between a and b. And since every term of the subsequence is between a and b, it follows that the limit of the subsequence must also be between a and b. So C is an element of the closed interval A comma B. But remember, F is continuous at every point in A comma B. So in particular, F is continuous at C. And since F is continuous at C, we can apply the sequential criterion. Since F is continuous at C, we know that this statement is true. And this statement works for every sequence of real numbers in the closed interval A comma B that converges to C. Well, we know that our subsequence is a sequence of real numbers in the closed interval a comma b, and it converges to c. Therefore, we must have that the sequence f of x n k converges to f of c. But we recall that every convergent sequence is bounded. So the sequence f of x and k is bounded. And to say f of x and k is bounded means that there exists some positive real number I'll call h, such that the absolute value of f of x and k is less than or equal to h for all positive integers k. So the absolute value of every term in this sequence is less than or equal to h. Now, since we're able to find a positive real number which satisfies this property, well, certainly, if we consider any positive integer that is bigger than h, it'll also satisfy this property. So it's safe to assume that h is a positive integer, because certainly we can find a positive integer that satisfies this property as well. Now, we're trying to reach a contradiction, and it seems that the fact that f of x and k is bounded and this fact will allow us to reach a contradiction. And the idea is, since this statement works for every positive integer, well, in particular, it must work for h. So we have absolute value of f of x and h is less than or equal to h. But remember that property of strictly increasing sequences of positive integers that we have, we must have that nh is greater than or equal to h. So, and h is greater than or equal to h, so we have this, but let's go back to how we chose each of these real numbers. For each positive integer n, we chose xn so that it satisfies this property. So in particular, if we consider the positive integer nh, so taking n to be nh, well then xnh was chosen so that the absolute value of f of xnh is greater than nh. So this guy is greater than nh, and now we see that nh is less than nh, which is a contradiction. So we've reached a contradiction. Our assumption that f is not bounded on a comma b led us to a contradiction, so we must instead have that f is bounded on a comma b. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.